Shit. Welcome to Trash Talk MMA. Smile on my face, behind my back, it's all trash. The number one podcast for news and insight that matters in the world of mixed martial arts. <laughs> Brought to you live and unfiltered from all four corners of the globe by MMA aficionado Antoine Pelchay. Yo, and welcome to the Trash Talk MMA podcast. I'm your host, Antoine Pelchay, and today I have two very special guests from AKA Thailand Mr. Adrian Sheed, gym manager, and Francisco Vidal, fight team manager. How's it going, guys? What's up, guys? Good, man. I just had a the grand tour of your beautiful facility here in Phuket. Yeah. I know, Adrian, you have a big part in this building coming together, this facility being put together. Tell us a little bit about your history as a gym manager. Um, I've worked in many gyms over Thailand over the last four or five years. Okay. And Mike invited me down to AKA. I literally bit his hand off for the opportunity. Came down here. And we basically started this place from scratch. It was just jungle. So when did uh, when did this enterprise begin? It began exactly 20 months ago. So we went from jungle to where we are now in 20 months. Yeah, we were talking about this a bit offline before we started recording of how uh, quickly and unconventionally some construction can take place in Thailand. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you uh, have the pleasure of observing it, it doesn't always appear to be done, uh, you know, to spec, as we would say, in, uh, in perhaps North America or Europe, but uh, how did you go about getting the right people to make this building? Because obviously, you want this thing to last uh, for many a moon. Yeah, well, luckily for us, we had um, we had some good connections in Phuket. Uh, we had Blair Spears, who's the owner of HotelTravel.com. He's been on the island for like 20 years now. Okay. So he, he he you know he knows his staff. He's been on the island a long time. Has some good connections, and uh, we hooked up with a good good building company. Yeah, that's, I didn't even think about that when you were telling me about Blair Spears earlier, because um, you were saying he's the, he's the investor in this place, right? That's right, okay. he is. So the fact that he's involved with hotels, obviously he's got some hookups in construction, and uh, that probably paid dividends. Yeah, yeah, the place is beautiful. Anybody who uh, wants to come out to a world-class facility really needs to come check out AKA Thailand. It's uh, it's stunning, and it's, uh, it's still got a lot to do. You still, so you're going to build a resort? We have. This is, uh, this is phase one. Yep. We, we just had talks last week. And we're about to start phase two, which is uh, 66 rooms, uh, deluxe, budget, VIP rooms, fighters rooms, uh, physiotherapy. Uh, we're going to add strength and conditioning, uh, another Muay Thai area. It's going to be pretty spectacular. And we're going to have a swimming pool as well. And a casino. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> so it sounds like you're really going for the, the all-inclusive angle. Uh, yeah. What, I, what I find interesting about your facility too here is it's it's kind of off of the main road uh, and it's nice that you gotta you gotta kind of go into the jungle. I like the fact that it's a little more a little more isolated even than, yeah. than some of the other gyms out here and um, yeah. I think that that's going to create a real comprehensive experience for anybody who wants to come out here and do what they should be doing here and that's train their ass off. Absolutely, there's no distractions here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's very easy to get distracted in Phuket. Yeah, it is, it is. But or another reason why we chose this area yep. because uh, this area is actually a Muslim area. So there won't be any there won't be any bars popping up, there won't be any like little girly bars if you like to say, popping yep. up on the street. Crazy parties around here, distracting fighters and people training here. Exactly. So. Yeah. Excellent. Now Francisco, you're the you're the fight team manager here. Yes. Can you explain to us a little bit what that role entails? Yes, um, here we have a, a really good group of guys, uh, fighters from everywhere around the world. And um, since we're building this, this gym and it's, it's growing rapidly, we have to make sure that everybody's taken care of, basically. Um, and uh, here in, in Asia, it's a growing market as well. And my, my role is to take care of these guys and make sure they have everything they need uh, when they're training whatever it is they need here in Thailand. I'm, I'm kind of their resources um, and uh, look fight for them and promote them and and make uh, their athlete branding, if you will. Okay. Um, you know, uh, think about the long term and, and see what's best for the guys. Yeah, one thing I've noticed uh, about AKA Thailand, you know, doing my research and seeing your presence online and, uh, and on social media is you guys are really 
doing everything in a very current fashion there. I mean, Adrian, did you, did you have a particular philosophy or strategy when it came to like, how, you know, how do we make sure that we come out the gate feeling like world class and that it's 2015 and we're on top of the social media game? Yeah, well, I think Mike brought that with him from uh, AKA HQ in San Jose. Okay. The, the worth ethic, the, the discipline, the, the sacrifice, and we, we just carried that over and brought it here to AKA Thailand which included, um, you know, like social media. Mike knows a lot about social media. He, he's been in the UFC for 10 years now, 10 years yesterday. So he knows yep. how to market, he knows how to do the interviews. He knows how much social media is to, you know, to our project, to AK Thailand, and how important it is for us. Yeah, and, it, and it's a funny thing because I think when you get involved with people who are athletes, who are fighters, who are trainers, a lot of them, they get, they get a lot of tunnel vision, you know, and they really get into a mode where, they, they just want to focus on their craft. Right. So Francisco, is it part of your role to make sure that you kind of alleviate them of some of those tasks that need to be done, but they're not particularly perhaps enthusiastic about doing, but, but that somebody's got to take charge of that? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, these guys need to focus on training and whenever they got you know issues or whatever, I'm the one that steps in and, and take care of it. So essentially a fighter could have any issue and come to you with it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yes. And we work really closely as a team with Adrian, Mark, and uh, all the people here at AK Thailand. And we make sure that we sort everything out. Like, we don't want them to worry about anything, and we want just them to train, have the best experience possible. Yeah, you can tell, especially when you're trying to launch a big operation like this, and you want it to be world class, and you want to build champions, that it's important to identify all these key roles and really put experts into every slot. You know, mm -hmm. to make sure that, hey, the, I mean, because yeah. essentially a fighter, all he should have to do, you know, is eat, sleep, train mm -hmm. his ass off, win fights, yeah, win absolutely. belts, exactly. you know, and everybody else should be helping him take care of the rest. So how did you, how did you, what, what brought you to Thailand and how did you become a, basically a manager of fighters? Um, actually, I came here when, uh, when the gym here just uh, opened. Uh, came in as a customer. Yep. And uh, you hear that a lot in a lot of gyms. You know, customers yeah. show up and they just <laughs> somehow yeah. infiltrate. You know, that's good. Please continue. And, and, uh, and yeah, basically, um, yeah, I felt like man, I'm going to Thailand um, because that was one of my dreams to come here for just you know forget about everything, just come here and and just uh, just relax, I guess, and uh, train Muay Thai. So that's what I did. I came here. I heard about the gym. Um, before it was actually open and uh, I didn't want to go to any other gym I I really wanted to be part of something new so this is what uh, brought me what, here. What made you think that like what, what did you have a preconception of perhaps how some of the other gyms were here or, or was it something no, about the no, AKA brand that attracted you or? It's the AKA brand actually Mike I, I've been a Mike uh, Mike's fan for a while you know yep. and uh, when I heard about this project I was like wow man I gotta check it out for myself and um, and yeah, basically, you know, you just wanna, you just want. Yeah, I was just curious, basically, yep. and uh, wanted to experience something like this. And uh, when I came to check it out, you know, I automatically fell in love with the place. Um, Adrian, we we pretty we got along pretty good in uh, like right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I decided to stay here, train here, and that's when it. That's when it, it, it came to me that, man, this lifestyle is, you know, I'm, I was living the dream. I was like, man, I'm ready to change my life to do this. And, um, you know, I ran my own consulting business uh, back in Canada. And uh, I even had a talk with Adrian back then, I remember. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I always been involved with martial arts all my life. and. You know, I have a lot of friends that are fighters, and um, but it just hit me like, man, you know what? I want to get into sports management. I want to be involved in MMA. Um, I know a lot, a lot about this. I'm, I've been a fan forever, and um, yeah, I just decided to get into it. You know what I mean? But did you have a did you have a sports management background? Uh, I didn't, but I I, I did uh, did my research and um, I got my credentials. Um, specifically to get in this in this kind of position um, so then I left here and went for that and you know learned what I had to learn experienced some uh, uh, some of it back home um, with some Muay Thai promotions some local gyms and then um, 
I got in touch with Mike, and then uh, we've been in touch since, like for a while, back and forth, and uh, you know, then he decided. It's cool. I mean, I like that story because it sounds like you created your job. You created your dream job, guy. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know? that's that's <laughs> that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I know, like when I you know I was back at EA Sports mm -hmm. and uh, I was working on hockey games and basketball games, doing commentary and audio for those and those. I like hockey, but basketball to me just I, I appreciate it from an athletic standpoint. But it's just not a sport that resonates with me. The only sport that really resonates with me is fighting. Right. So I always I, I, I use that those eight years at EA Sports to just learn how to do the job. So when you were saying, hey, you know, there's something I want to do here. I know this different context that I want to apply it in. But you you used you know another content. You went and got the education. You applied it, and then you're able to basically cherry pick you know your dream job and. Uh, I know once THQ back in 2007, they announced that they had the, the UFC license for the game. Then I literally just, people like, How, how'd you get that job? And I was like, hey, it's pretty crazy. I, I grabbed a piece of paper and I said, hi, my name's Antoine Pelletier. I'm a commentary designer and audio director for EA Sports. I see you guys have the UFC license. They're going to pump out some games. I'm an MMA freak and I'd love to be a part of this, you know, be a part of this product. If you'd like my services, give me a call. And they, two weeks later, they gave me a call. Two weeks later, they flew me down. And three days later, I had an offer. And it was just... Awesome. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I like hearing stories like this. Sure. You know, and, you know, we were talking, uh, Adrian, about, about your previous experience trying to set up a, a big, a big uh, martial arts gym in, in Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai. And, and that fell apart due to logistic reasons and politics. And, yeah. uh, and you, you felt like you're, you know, you were in a terrible situation. You yeah. just got married and had a child, and now you have no income. And Absolutely. you thought it was the end of the world. And, yeah. and lo and behold, look, look at how things have turned around. Again, you, you learned how to do it in a different right. context, and you're now applying it in a better one. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, Absolutely. you know what I, re I really believe that you know when you have a dream and you chase it and you go after it, you can make it reality. And I think that applies to anybody. And um, I created this for myself, but if it wasn't for Adrian and Mike, it would not have happened. It always takes other people. It you takes know, people yeah, yeah, around you. you. It takes stuff, yeah. you know, and it's it's like sometimes you believe that no, I did this by myself, but no, the reality is that yes, you can make dreams come true, but there's a support system that you need to have around you. And, and it's never just one person that makes great things happen. No. It's never. It's always, it's always a, a team. People look at these video games that EA cranks out or Ubisoft and stuff. People have no idea the army of people yeah. behind it yeah. that are slaving and toiling away on these things. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I want to work on a UFC video game. I'm just the audio guy. We still need graphic designers and we need animators and we need 3D modelers and we need AI programmers exactly. and we need front end designers. I mean, it's just a, it's a small army of people, yeah. several hundred people. So you know you can you you're obviously contributing to that in more or less of a capacity, but it takes teams to make great things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know a great team working towards the same goal and uh, same passion, same passion exactly. You share the same passion, yeah. and all these people coming here have the same passion. And a lot of these people, like I met a lot of people that come to Thailand and be like, man, this changed my life. Coming here changed my life. Yep. Why? Because maybe they reached a goal, a fitness goal, or maybe just because by training they gain the mental peace to reflect on other stuff that just, you know. Mm -hmm. Or they just see another way of living, guys. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be this rat race, you know, exactly. in like Western fun. society. It is fun, man. You know, that you can actually work hard, but do it in a fun, healthy, sunny, reasonably, in a, uh, you know, inexpensive environment yeah exactly but let's stay on the topic of dream chasing so yeah people come out here it's a world-class facility let's talk about your world-class training staff who mm -hmm. do people get the pleasure of working out with out here when they come to train your MMA and, and Muay Thai uh, for me the Muay Thai program I run the Muay Thai program okay um, I have a good connection with the with the trainers um, I have a good connection with promoters I'm obviously I'm half Thai half English and yeah, I, I, I'm sure I can only imagine how valuable that is to an operation like it out here because yeah. doing business in Thailand, in Thailand. as a foreigner, I, 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 I sort of looked into it a little bit. Absolutely. And I think uh, having somebody like yourself uh, on board must clear a lot of yeah, roadblocks. For sure. Yeah. yeah, my speaking skills definitely definitely help out a lot. Yeah. So well, communication is everything. Yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely. In any language, between human beings, man, it's like... And the culture. Yeah. You gotta need yeah. the culture. The culture. And the Thai culture. The Thai culture is, is very important to understand. Yeah. Because they... Thais have a... 
they seem to lose face pretty quickly okay. uh, over small things. But um, yeah, sorry. Going back to the Muay Thai program. Yep. Um, I designed a Mu- Muay Thai program. I got all the trainers in. We have a uh, we have um, Seti Ella One, who's a Channel Seven Stadium champion and sixteen man tournament champion. We have uh, a Raja champion in uh, Dogget, aka Thailand. Okay. Twenty four years old. Amazing guy, wealth of experience, 40, 40 pro boxing fights, over 300 Muay Thai fights. Um, he's fought in Laos, he's done fighting with ropes on his hands, you name it, he's done it. That's some funky shit, man, the yeah. fights. And, he, and he's never been cut. <laughs> That's hardcore. He's never been never cut. Never been cut. No. He's never That's had stitches it. to his little pre face. Yeah. So what do you do you actually do any of the training yourself or is that the team of trainers that you manage? The team of trainers that I brought in. Okay. They do the training. Okay. Yeah, because people want they come to Thailand, they want to experience the Thai style. So that the Thai trainers Yeah, I think that's something that uh, will be very difficult to break. I think there's you know there's, there's traditional Muay Thai training and a lot of people come to Thailand to yeah. get that. I don't think they want, you know, a Westerner or a yeah. Caucasian individual right. to that something that's a part of the mystique is doing it with you know it's exactly. training with the, the official dudes right yeah, yeah. okay and I exactly. think I think here something special is that uh, uh, the trainers they they have fun at the same time you know so people come yeah. here and they have a blast you know it's not like hardcore beating up the students and stuff like that no it's really like yeah. friendly atmosphere and it's really they want to pass yeah. on their knowledge as, as best as possible and in some camps when they do privates the customer feels like they have to have to stay with that one trainer but here because we've had a meeting we sat down but they want you to change from trainer to trainer so you can get knowledge from each trainer yep, get those different as perspectives much information and learn as much as possible and take that back home with you okay so it's a real family environment here you know so so and then uh, so moving on from Muay Thai who do we have on uh, for BJJ for BJJ BJJ uh, we got Marcio Gracinha he's a, a black belt second degree um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, originally from uh, Team Nova Unia, okay. uh, he's got over 30 fights, MMA pro fights, um, he's the one uh, lead, uh, leading the BJJ program, so it's very, fo- uh, Jiu Jitsu very focused on MMA. Okay, yeah, so it's BJJ for MMA. Yes, okay. uh, we have the no gi and the gi as well, um, but yeah, it's very efficient for MMA, so um, we got a lot of fighters coming here, MMA fighters, so they're really happy with this training because you know it helps for their MMA game as well. Yep. So, um, so yeah, we got Marcio, and uh, we also have uh, Pedro Pedro Vinagre. He's also um, Brazilian um, Brazilian uh, black belt. Um, he fought. It was in the, actually in uh, Ultimate Fighter Brazil. He competed on there. And uh, now he's training with us, and uh, he's also uh, also training with us with the, in the MMA program. Uh, as far as the MMA goes, Mike is the head coach, okay. and uh, Marcio he's he's also the coach for MMA MMA classes for pro fighters. Okay. In terms of fighters competing here, training here on a world class level, who who are some of the the big in, big name in house fighters you have here? Today? Here, man, we got some really good guys, man. Uh, we got the team captain Soa, Soa, Hulk. 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 the Hulk. Hulk. Yep. Yeah, he's been on a tear. Yeah, man, he's a beast. We got some big news coming soon. No, what's cool with him too is, I mean, he kind of made a name for himself a few years back. He had a stint in the UFC and that didn't go so well. And then he kind of went away and then it just seems like he went on this crazy winning winning tear. And now he's back in the UFC just blasting guys. I mean, what? how did so reinvent himself like that? I think I think by training here, man, it's, it's just a different, a different lifestyle. So you get to train and focus only on training and uh, I think Mike and Soa it off pretty good and yeah and uh, I think it's, it's been really great for his career he's been you know finishing all of his fights like yeah oh, just so making short sure work again he's looked devastating yep. since he's been training here I mean he calls AK Thailand his home now is he out here uh, right now 
He's on his way back. He'll, okay. be, he'll be here very shortly. Yeah. Okay. He's got some big news. He's going to announce his next fight. Okay. And he'll be doing his camp here. Excellent. Yeah. Do you know when he starts that? Uh, within probably after Songkran. Oh, excellent. Yeah, okay. excellent. I want to talk with him. Yeah. Might be a, she seems like a character too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah he's fun. What a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Yeah. That's dope. I'm sure he's singing a song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Soap Lele, who else we got? I mean, well, obviously Mike Swick's about to recompete here. Yeah, you know, Mike Swick. just announced he's his fight against Alex Garcia at UFC 189, so that's huge news yeah. for you guys. So, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So he's starting his fight camp. Uh, officially what, next week yeah next week on this camp and uh, and yeah uh, fighting in July so this is gonna be great uh, we're gonna have some guys coming in so to help them out so everybody on the team is gonna be focused on helping him uh, we also have uh, so sorry if we can just dwell on that for a second so I mean Mike's gonna do his full camp here or will he also camp. full okay. camp yes. yes so will he be bringing in some of the big guns from he's, the homeland here he's bringing in a uh, Habib, okay. yeah, Habib's coming in to help him out, awesome. and Luke Rockhold's going to be coming in okay. as well. Luke's been out here a bit already, right? Yeah, Luke's been out here on, okay. on one occasion before. Okay. Yeah, he loved it. and wants to He's got out. a big fight coming up. Yeah, I guess like two weeks. Next week, 16th, I believe 16th or 17th of April. That's going to be a nasty fight, man. I, man, Luke's going to... Yeah. I, 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 no, it's not because I'm here, but I, you'll see. I, I always do my predictions on my site, my blog, and uh, I, I do have I do have Rockwell taking this. Yeah. I think I think Machida is going to wilt under this one. Yeah. And listen, God bless the other Machida. He's great, awesome. great fighter. Great this fighter. Is, I actually love this matchup. It's like it's it's such a, a new yeah. school versus not old school, but I mean. More it's traditional, a, traditional yeah, martial art. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Rockhold's wild in there, man. I remember I was in the Dominican Republic when he whooped. Uh, it was the dude out of, who used to be out of the Cerro Longo camp, uh, Constantino Filippo. Oh, okay, um, yeah, oh, yeah. And that was just how did he make short work of Filippo? Because Filippo's just a, he's a tough, durable yeah, he's a guy, tough dude, yeah. tough big guy. guy. And Strong. then he made short work out of Tim Boach. Yeah, I Luke's mean, special, man. He's special. When you came to train, he had. I just think that in that fight that he's it just Leoto's not going to be able to handle the explosiveness and just the the reach. The, the, he's got the reach. He's got the, he's got a lot of tools, man. Yeah, he certainly has. Definitely will be an interesting fight. Anything can happen in that fight. So yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, but Machida, I mean, he's he's looked good too. I mean, he looked good against Weidman. And yeah. Weidman makes everybody look bad. Yeah. You know, he he looked good, and it was impressive to see him even in the last thirty seconds still really going for it, and even mm-hmm. taking some risks like he doesn't do. You know, he was sticking his chin out there and just yeah. trying to throw bombs. He knew he needed to finish them, and yeah. I thought Machida looked great there. He destroyed Munoz. I mean, it's a big fight. It's, it's a, a big, big fight. fight. This is a, a big, big, fight big fight for both guys. I think uh, if, if if Luke beats Machida, could put him you know next next up for the title shot because he has the win over Jacare. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only setback was Vitor. Yeah. You know? Mm. And he, no. wa- he wants to rematch that. I know. I yep. know he wants to rematch. Oh, and I mean, if he can get to Machida, that's definitely well deserved. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so Mike's going to be bringing in, um, you were saying, so Luke Habib. and, uh, and Habib. 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 Yeah, Habib. That fight's going to be wild too. He fights Cerrone on the. Uh, on the, um, that's what, on what the, card is that? That's at, at the 187 Vitor, on the Vitor Weidman card. Is that the, that's the John Jones and uh, Johnson fight as well? John Jones, Anthony Johnson, Anthony Johnson Vitor, yeah. Vitor against Vitor, Weidman, Habib against Cerrone, <laughs> Crazy and Joseph Benavidez against John Baraga. <laughs> right, right. And there's one more on there. This, it's an absolutely it's a crazy it's card. It's an absolutely nut. There's, I'm forgetting. There's another just stupid, ridiculous fight on that card. Yeah. Um, I forget about what to. But did you yeah. see the, the fight they just added to UFC 189? Diaz versus uh, Brown. Yeah, and it's funny because Diaz is now kind of. He's tweeting, tweeting that he's supposed to be fighting Pettis next. All right, oh, I see <laughs> that. Typical Diaz you know, nonsense. Yeah, Diaz. But he's saying that. He, he wants that fight too, but he, he said that normally he's going to take a fight versus Pettis, which mm-hmm. would be a great fight too. But. Yeah. Um, okay, so So, Lele, uh, Mike Swick. Who else we got training on site that's uh, that's making waves right now? Uh, Paul Daly is back in June. So does Paul Daly is this going to be home or is how, how does he no, fit into Paul, the? Paul Daly will be here for for a couple of weeks, but if Mike's in fight camp and Paul's coming here for a fight camp preparation, okay. So they probably combine the two and, and work together a bit. Okay, I'm a big I'm a big Paul Daly fan. Yeah, me too. Paul Daly, awesome left hook. 
So who? But I mean, who? Who's his camp? Who's like who? Do, who, where, who does Paul Daly officially fight out of? Uh, Spirit Dojo. Okay. Back in uh, Nottingham in okay. UK. So he'd come here just for a tune-up. Yep. Okay. Come here for a couple of weeks. Okay. And he, work he, on his Muay Thai. He seems to frequent Thailand a bit, right? I mean, he's he does. He's, yeah, okay. He does. Yeah, Last time he was here, he trained here for for ten days, and then uh, we went to pa- uh, Pattaya. In, uh, in the middle of um, just outside of Bangkok yep. and, and he fought K1 okay. which we, which had a Borkow it was the main event with against Enrico Kell okay. where there's that big controversy yeah, where Borkow ran out the ring <laughs> yeah. Thailand politics yeah. things like that happen in Muay Thai yeah. <laughs> what's the expression in yeah. these things happen in MMA yeah. these things happen in Muay Thai yeah, yeah I think and coming back to the fight camp, I think uh, this is going to be great, man. Like Mike is, is going to do his fight camp here. And that was his dream, right? It yeah. was like uh, build an amazing gym. Build his dream gym. His dream gym. Life. And then make his fight camp out of his dream gym. Yep. And then fight from, you know. But the thing is, the different for AK Thailand is when he's doing a fight camp, he's having all these guys coming from all different parts of the world who have got all kinds of different backgrounds that he can he can pick and choose who he wants to work with. Yep. Whereas in AK San Jose, all right, you've got Kane, you've got DC, you got Luke, you've got Habib, but they don't have that, you know, they don't have guys from all around the world that can come in and But that's great, I think, I, I, I mean, I think that's a great way for AK to expand its brand. Yeah. And, and to give that different look that, hey, you can be in the States and you've got these staples, these, this, you know, murderers, murderers. of icons, you know, yeah. you know, that are there. And if people want to go train with that, then they can go there. But I mean, the fact that, hey, or you can just get exotic and, and come out here yeah. and have this wild facility and have all these different people that Absolutely. you know coming in from all you know corners of the world I think that's yeah. pretty wild you know yeah. and here the, the good thing is here is a cheaper uh, cost of life so if you and come living. here and you live here for let's say one month two months three months then you can afford it as to like if you go to America or whatever yep. it's, it's so much more expensive yeah. now, now for, for people who want to train are the doors open at AK in San Jose like they are here for anybody to come in and train they, they can go there and train yeah. Nope. yeah they have a gym there There's, they have everything there yeah people can go and train okay but is, does it have this, the same sort of open door philosophy that you guys have here of what you're really trying to cater to bring in people who are in Thailand and visiting Thailand and, and have a dream of you know getting professional martial arts training yeah um, not, 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 not like in Thailand yeah. not like we have here this, I mean this is a golden opportunity yeah, I mean, and I think, uh, you know, talking with all the people that I've, that I've interviewed and had conversations with out here, that one of the real themes that I get from everybody is they, they love the fact that it's affordable and they love the fact that there's people who are constantly on site who are so reputated and so good to train with, but then there's also all these other, you know, pro guys who come and visit, you know, mm-hmm. and Alistair Overeems and Paul Daly's and, Absolutely. you know, and we can talk about that too because... Um, I know you guys are going to start to branching off into doing seminars here, and you have uh, Marlon Sandro coming in. Yes. So what's uh, what's the connection there with Marlon? Um, these guys are friends with Marcio. Yep. Uh, Marcio are so that's the new Luan Yao connection. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. connection. Leo Santos come here as well. Okay. Um, so it's a Brazilian connection. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, people will see this opportunity to train with these guys. You know, belter fighter. UFC fighter, um, it, it's gonna be great, man. I think they're gonna show some ninja techniques in there. I can't wait for this. So when uh, when is uh, Marlon coming out here, Lewis? When are they when are they out here? Two weeks time. Two weeks. Two weeks time. So Two weeks. Uh, it's gonna be May first. So they should be here like maybe a couple of days before that or something like this. Yeah. Okay, and they'll stay for how long? Uh, I think for about a week. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's yeah. cool because a lot of times for seminars, it's almost just like the guys pop up for one day and you know do their thing and then and then yeah. bounce. Hopefully so, they'll they'll train here and yeah, I think they're training. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean that's a fantastic opportunity for anybody out at that exactly. time. It's like hey man, you can you can roll and, and spar with Marlon Sancho while he's out here. Yeah, you know I mean, that guy's a, that guy's a murderer yeah. too, man. I'm a, I'm a big Marlon Sancho fan. Yeah. Excellent. You get to um, roll with him while you're here. Huh? 
you know what? I've never rolled. I've never done oh, anything. Oh, really? You've never done it? No, it's, it's a chance, chance man. It's, it's a chance. chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I, I love martial arts and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm very admirative of the people that, that, that do that, but just that dynamic, it just doesn't resonate with me. You know what I mean? Mm. Hit, the, hit sparring, great, but you know. It's funny how some people like Crazy. I think I think there's people you know they they've done like wrestling or jujitsu when they're young and they're used to that whole that, all that shuffle and hustle and scramble and yeah. it's like if you're not used to that type of contact it's just different you know what I mean I think there's some people they gravitate towards that they love the, the just the primal nature of it yeah and other people I'm just like oh man just don't even come near me with that shit man. <laughs> you know that's why well, I told just kids knees and elbows you have to try it first you know I, I, mean? I agree I agree you have no, to it's try absolutely it. so much to try so hey. Fun. Yeah, I feel like it. Yeah. I'm not even critical of it. So somewhere I've kind of just been at your arm's yeah. length, but you know. I hear you. Not for everybody. So anybody else in, in MMA, or do you guys have some K1 fighters, some big Muay Thai guys? Uh, there's Matt. You want to mention Matt? Uh, Matt, Matt Mattix. Okay. He, he's, um, he's just come on board as one of our sponsored fighters. Yep. Okay. He's a WBC, WMC North American champion, and I've just recently, uh, yesterday actually, Talked to the promoters and arranged a fight for him against Sanchai. Oh, really? Yeah, Sanchai is one of the greatest Muay Thai fighters. Of Where will that time. take place? It's going to be in Koh Samui on the 2nd of May on Thai Fight Live on National TV Channel 3. So he'll so, be repping AKA Thailand? Absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Absolutely. That's so, crazy. We, like, in the short space of time we've, we've been here, we've had a WMC 60 man tournament champion. That's a. Uh, See the trophy there on the table. Um, we've been on Max Muay Thai, we've been on Thai Fight, we've been on Lao Fight. We've, uh, yeah, we've done really well. So you, you mentioned sponsorship. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. For people who, you know, can you come out to Thailand, a lot of people come out here with a dream to just learn how to fight, and some of them end up sticking around and getting fights. Yeah. Now, is that something that, that AKA Thailand is going to provide that if you come out here and you show heart and determination and grit and that we see something in you that absolutely we can find you fights. You got AKA Thailand and your name on the fight poster. That, absolutely. Do you have different tiers of sponsorship? Like being that AKA, there could be some guys that are yeah. here on their own dime as a client yeah. and that you see something in them, find them fights, corner them and whatnot, but then they go back home. Is that, is that a type of sp- sponsorship that or yeah. support that you guys can provide? What we do is if a guy comes through and he's looking to be a sponsored fighter, um, what we do is put, for the Muay Thai, I put them on a three to four month duration. Okay. This is where they pay for full training for the three to four months and then I evaluate them and the trainers evaluate them. Excellent. You see how skillful they are, how hard they are, that you know their personality outside the ring. Um, we take them to fight, we corner them, we see if they listen, you know, and we, we, we really evaluate. Yeah, you see if they fall in line with the philosophies of, if, the, of the brand. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And if, if, yeah. if he's what AK Thailand's looking for, then we sit down after and say, hey, you did great, I'd like to give you free training, maybe uh, free, uh, three square meals a day for food, and maybe we pay for accommodation. But again, it depends on the level of the fighter and how good they are. See, what I like about what you're saying here is that you, you actually can spell that out black on white. Uh, that, that's cool because people then, you know, who are listening to this, they can be like, okay, I want, yeah. I want to go out and try this out. And they yeah. know that that actual program exists. It you know, exist. come yeah. out and over those exact amount of times, we're going to evaluate you. Yeah. There's, a, there's a black on white list of check boxes, yeah. right? If, so if bad, you take them all, you're in. If you don't take them all, then, you know, just... Well, keep, keep you trying. could be there, but you're gonna, you're not gonna get the full sponsorship. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. You could be enough, good enough to get free training, and and just free training. Yep. And, and I'll organize your fights. So, you know, I'll hook you up to get the guys to corner you and everything. And then we've experienced after time, they might get to the next level, and then we can talk about ex- you know, yeah, um, food upgrading, and accommodation, upgrading their sponsorship. Yeah. Okay. Now, who right now, as of today? Represents AK Thailand on the international fight team as fighters. At, at this moment, yep. Uh, for the Muay Thai, we have Dylan Crushon, yep. uh, Matt Mattix, we have uh, two ladies, Jenna, Jenna and Gemma. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both on my fight team, and we're looking to extend it. I'm, okay. I'm looking for fighters now. So, 
Yeah, and so then on the on the on the MMA front is Sokolele uh, is he AK Thailand? Yes, yes, so yes. Lele, yes of course. Uh, we got Jeff Wan, who's a one FC fighter. Okay. Um, we also have Glenn Spar. Um, he's a welterweight. He's the current number one welterweight in Finland, and uh, he's based here. He's he's been training with us for about seven months now. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah, I've seen Spar fight. We talked about that earlier. Yes. Uh, made him at that full metal dojo one. That was a wild fight. This guy's special, man. He's really talented, and he's the the hardest working guy in the gym. And uh, he's a great example for the other guys. Yeah, and, sure. uh, work ethic, like second to none. And uh, this is the kind of guy that we want here. Uh, you know, hardworking, respectful, humble guys, and you know, team like good teammates, basically. Yeah. And. Uh, who else we got? Wang Zai. Wang Zai was a UFC fighter from China. He was on the uh, first Ultimate Fighter of China. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He got to the final, and there's a picture of him actually up there getting his hand raised. Yeah. That was after the Ultimate Fighter, that was his, his next UFC fight. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a few guys. That's on good. The, on the good. So, it sounds like you guys are happy. It sounds like you're growing at the right rate. As well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. From jungle to now, 20 months, and we've had UFC wins, we've had uh, Muay Thai champions, and yeah, things are going great. And it's only getting started, you know. And we just started, this is just the beginning. Very cool. Listen guys, it's been awesome talking with you guys. Thank you very much for opening the doors and letting me check all this out and giving me all this insight. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Hey, man, yeah, thank I wonder you. if I want to come back and then talk with a lot of you guys. It sounds like there's a bunch of a bunch of killers that need to need to get on the show and uh, yeah. and kind of get their story and message out there. Absolutely. Because you know, I think that anybody who chooses to come here and leave, you know, the comforts of their home, there's there's always an interesting story behind it. You've got an incredible one, Adrian. We haven't even really talked about that. I mean, no. you did tours in Iraq. And yeah. I, and I, yeah, I know you're you're quite the killer yourself in the in the ring and yeah. in terms of fighting. Yeah. You know, so it's it's great to hear people having these different struggles, these different experiences, and, and bringing it all together here in a facility where people can you know enjoy a, a fantastic country in in a really wild environment. You know, people have got to see this place. Like you drive off the road and you you're out in the jungle. You know, it's. It's pretty cool. I mean, you're saying you're going to have a resort here that's going to have ocean views. Ocean view, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not in San Jose here. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's pretty wild, you know? Yeah, it's going to be one of the best gyms in the world for sure. Yeah, okay, well, no, it looks like you guys are on, on, on the right path for that. Right so right. I wish you all, uh, all, all great success in what you're doing, and I hope I can be part of, uh, of being a bit of a voice for you guys to get your message and, and promoting you out there. Sure. So, awesome. well, Mike, I'd love to talk yeah, to you. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thanks. oh, absolutely. He'll, he'll be in next tomorrow. Francisco, thank you for your time. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Man. All right, guys, this was the Trash Talk MMA podcast with my good friends from AK Thailand, Adrian Sheed, gym manager, and Francisco Vidal, the fight team manager. We're signing off. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Peace. Peace. See you guys. Thanks for listening to the Trash Talk MMA podcast. Be sure to visit TrashTalkMMA.com. And don't forget to follow Antoine on Twitter at Trash Talk MMA. Let us know you're listening. Use hashtag TrashTalkMMA.